Depending on how you use the Final Cut Pro, quite often it generates rendered files to reduce the load on your CPU and GPU. And sometimes those cached files can take up a lot of space, resulting in bulky Final Cut Pro libraries. In this video, I'll be taking you through the steps you need to take to clean up the cache. Let's get into it. So I edit all my videos on external SSDs that allows me to have a lot of space and don't have to worry about the space running out. But there are still times where Final Cut Pro for some reason takes up a whole space. There was a time where I had a one terabyte drive almost filled up for one video. It was crazy. So, so I've plugged in one of my SSDs and let's open it. And uh, we can see here that there is a newer NW700. I made that video a few weeks ago. Now you can see there are like some video files. There's a library. That's the actual output and some audio files. And there are a bunch of files that are missing because I di just directly imported them into the library. You can see that it has, it says 270 gigabytes. And if I open this library, we can see that on the right hand side when the library is selected that it's taking up 270 gigabytes. That is a lot of space. And now before I show you how to delete those files, let me show you where they actually are. If you right click on the library and click on the show package contents, it will open that library up in Finder. Then click on the uh, event. So that's the name of the event. So event is just the, um, the event is inside the library. So just open the same event that you have and you have a bunch of folders, but the only two folders that you care about here are the original media and rendered files. If I right click and click on get info for the original media, you can see that it's 80.88 gigabytes. I had three cameras, multiple scenes, audio files, a whole lot of B-roll. So it kind of makes sense that it was 80 gigabytes. So that's fine. However, this rendered files, if I get info on that, that is a whopping 189.27 gigabytes. That is the actual problem. Going back to Final Cut Pro, all you have to do is just make sure that the library is selected. Now, the way I do it is for every video that I make, I create a library. So for me, I, I don't care about deleting all the render files for this one project. I'm just gonna click on file while the library is selected and click on delete generated library files. Now, if you've selected the project and not the library, then you would see the option that says delete generator project files. Does it show you for the event files? Yes. So, you know, if you have multiple events, so it kind of makes it easy for you to do that because you can either delete the render files for a project, library or event. I just do the whole library thing. Click on the library file, delete generated library files. Now, in this case, what I do is I just check everything. I say delete rendered files, all delete optimized media, delete proxy media. And once you've done that, click OK. If I go to Finder and go back to my library, you should see that it is, oops, I'm not sure what's happening. Yep, you can see it went all the way from 270 gigabytes or whatever the number was, 250 gigabytes, all the way to 81.23 gigabytes, which is super good because now I have plenty of space in my SSD to work on other projects. So the other thing that you can do is click on Final Cut Pro in the top menu bar and then click on settings. Under editing or playback, you see it says background render, just uncheck that. Uncheck the create optimized media for multicam clips. Now, here's the thing. All of these options and these rendered files are to help you. It all depends on storage, versus performance. So if you have a high performance computer and you don't have much storage, I would say that you should just uncheck all these options that I mentioned and you should be good to go. However, if you have an older computer, like non M1 computers, non M2, non Apple Silicon computers, and your video files are, again, you're dealing with 4K or your computer is super slow, then I think it's not a bad idea to keep these checked because once the computer does render your videos, it will be easier for you to edit and uh, export those. But the camera that I use are these A6400s and A6600s and AZV-E10s. These are the APS-C Sony cameras and they record 4K files, but they are super easy to work with. They, they're not like full frame FX3, A7S3, 10-bit color video files. 
These are 8-bit video files. I don't use any LUTs. I don't use any picture profiles on these. My videos are super easy to work with in terms of the, the computers that I'm using and the video files that I get out of these cameras. So I don't really need to have any of these cached and optimized media that Final Cut Pro creates. So, so anyways, now you know how to clear the cache. I hope this video helped you out and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any topics to suggest and yeah, see you in the next video. And by the way, I made a video on the, the Samsung T7 SSD that you can click somewhere over here to uh, watch it. Cheers.